I love the picture this way. We're in Acts chapter 4. That's where we are studying. We studied Acts chapter 3 at the first service this past Sunday. Where we're looking at the miracle that took place uh, at the entrance of the temple. Or the beautiful gate. That crippled man that stood up to walk. Now, chapter 4 is the outcome. So we are going to look at, if time permits us, I will teach on three major areas. Number one, I will teach us on how to handle betrayers and negative treatments from people who should applaud us. We will learn how to handle them. Two, we are also going to learn uh, what we stand to gain when we improve our devotion to Jesus. This light is not on him. This one. Then, number three, if time permits us, we will talk about um, uh, how to uh, build a company of believers, which means that as Christians, you must learn to gather other believers. You know, you must... We'll, we'll talk about that when we get there. Praise the Lord. So, we are starting with Acts chapter 4, and I want us to read from verse 1 to verse 3. Then we also jump to from verse 8 and 9. Then we learn from our first point. Please open your hearts. Let God speak to you. you that's why you have come to church. So that you can learn one or two things. Like I always say it. A, a true Christian doesn't stop growing. A true Christian continues to grow. May you not get to the point that the word of God becomes offensive to you. I didn't hear your amen. Uh, I don't know what to do. 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 I don't know And don't ever get to a point where the word of God is not new to you again. May you not get to that point. Come on. 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 You know, every time I hear the word, I read the word, I gain something new. Praise the Lord. So can we uh, go to Acts chapter 4 from verse 1 to verse 3. Now while they are bringing it up, you know, I learned some lessons yesterday uh, at uh, Brother Precious uh, Naming. Very powerful lessons, you know. And it encouraged my heart to be more committed. Hear me. To be more committed to developing men for Jesus. You know, for to render myself more as a vessel to develop men. I remember before you came, Brother Precious, your dad came earlier than you. In fact, he came around uh, uh, 10 or 15 minutes to the time we were to name the church. The program was to start. And right there at the entrance, you know what I saw? The first thing he did was to prostrate. Now, I'm younger to him in age he's an elderly man he's a pastor too but the, the way he prostrated for me to thank me you know was really encouraged it touched my heart you know why to me i saw that he was grateful because i didn't really understand it until when brother precious too came in and told me something uh, his father wanted him to do that he didn't agree uh, you know what my conclusion brother precious too omoto leni you know, you know, but I believe that they coming here never thought that there could be somebody that God will use for their son. Now, listen, one of the greatest gifts that God can ever give you is giving you a leader, a mentor. Don't run if your scripture is ready to put it on screen, on screen to online, so they can learn from this. Don't run the journey of life mentorless. Did you hear me? Don't run the journey of life mentorless. Let, don't, don't live life in such a way that nobody can talk to you. Let there be somebody's voice that you listen to. Somebody's voice that you allow to shape your life. Somebody that you will deliberately respect not that the person is God. Did you understand me? That you would deliberately respect to say, uh, I will allow this person's voice to guide me. Praise the Lord. And that person must be somebody you are sure. In fact, I myself was proud of him yesterday when 
all of the family members came around they saw him you know they had, after the service with someone they were coming to a pastor thank you pastor if you know him about how many years ago was it you came to church how many years ago can you remember 12 years ago when he came if you know him then in fact some of them even said i should send him away but i thank the lord i thank the lord that through him his a, a granddaughter came through him a grandson so these are people i can call my own grandchildren praise the lord so allow yourself to be mentored please if you allow yourself to be mentored you will become a better person you can't mentor yourself all this uh, i can't build myself you can't mentor yourself there's an extent to which you can help yourself you need help tell your neighbor you need help can we have our scripture now ready acts of apostles chapter 4 now look at this the bible says and as they spake unto the people follow this reading the priest and the captain of the temple and the sadducees came upon them verse 2 being grieved pay attention to this being grieved that they taught the people and preached through jesus the resurrection of the dead they were angry that they were preaching about jesus and look at verse 3 and they laid hands on them and put them in hold unto the next day for it was now even tied now wait for me here you can remove it now the bible says they arrested them and put them where in prison if you look at what they did in acts chapter 3 uh, they wrote they were able to make a pray, prayerfully make a crippled man to walk now look at the rewards they were giving them somebody who raised a crippled man and he took back dua from aro ti aro de dide ta won kan wa nbinu pe ah rubbish lele now rubbish lele now won se ma furuko jesus ma you know they got so angry to the point that they locked them up people that they were supposed to be applauding they were supposed to be clapping to say ah these guys did so well you know when i was studying this scripture um the lord put this in my heart i wrote it down this way several believers do not know how to manage betrayal or negative treatments from people who should applaud them now i will explain with some illustrations i know that as christians you have done well to start several people communicating you know maybe family members church members neighbors people around you've done you have been nice to them just like Peter and John were nice to that crippled man who was born crippled. They ministered to him. He rose up and began to walk. And look at what they paid him back. Now, it looks very hurtful. Now, you must have gone through things like that before. But today I want to teach you something. Maybe some people you have helped that later in life began to speak against you. Have you experienced it like that before? And you hear them speaking against you. Or people that you you went all out to help them to become something or to achieve a feat a dream and all of a sudden they just turn their back without even having to say goodbye have, have you have, have, have such thing, a thing happened to you before uh, without even having to say goodbye or people that you can you have used your finances your resources to defend but you see them when it is your turn they are not even ready to pay back they could not even stand for you per minute for you know yeah, uh, for a second and you are so you are shocked you are surprised that I, with all these things i have done listen several christians were not taught how to manage things like this now and if you are not taught hear me you will make several mistakes just like what happened here if if it will have entered the news it will have been something that the news will you know will pick it up and they begin to talk about Peter and John. Ah, we all know the crippled man. That man had been crippled, sitting at that gate, beautiful gate for years. In fact, he was even born like that. Oh, what these people have done. We are supposed to give them a praiser. We are supposed to give them a title. You know, we are supposed to do something for them. But the Bible says, they picked them and locked them up. Now, and I know some of you are hot. If you are in the shoe of Peter, how will you feel that day? They picked you and locked you up for the good you have done. They picked you and locked you up.
for the favor you have shown how can we as children of god handle things like this now look at uh, acts the same acts chapter 4 8 and 9 look at what peter said for you to know that what they did was good 8 and 9 look at verse 8 and 9 verse 8 and 9 i read then peter filled with the holy ghost with the holy spirit said to them rulers of the people and elders of israel he called them rulers and elders of israel verse 9 rulers and elders of israel take us to verse 9 yes if we this day are judged look at it for a good deed to a helpless man by what means he has been made to we are judged we showed a good deed to a helpless man is this what you want to pay us back that's what peter is saying is this how you are going to pay us is this how you are going to pay us i wrote here ask us pastors how we feel when we are being spoken against attacked even when our intentions are very pure and good i remember one particular day uh um um we helped one of our members he was trusting god for house rent so we gathered some money fifty thousand naira. we gave him to pay rent they wanted to throw him out of his house and something little happened in the workers meeting what was it that happened the uh, head of the workers uh, uh, sanctuary keepers was giving a report that sir people are no longer our, our members have not been coming frequently and this young man stood up and said my wife has been coming and he said no sir your wife has not been coming so he he picked up an argument and i said excuse me sir please sit down sit down let's handle this matter he stood up he didn't even think of what we did and he walked out of the meeting he got to the entrance of the church he turned back i know the spirit in him said my friend begin to go he turned again and left now this just one out of many we that are pastors listen we know what it means to be hot but i want to show you something today that you are a child of god when you gave your life to christ hear me one of the covenants you made with god is that you will no longer live your life being led by the flesh you won't allow your flesh to control you anymore that you will live your life according to how the leading of the spirit i wrote this down listen a feelings reflect the human part of you for instance you feel bad it shows that you are human there's nothing bad in feeling bad when you are being hurt when you are being betrayed when you are being spoken against especially by people that you have been a blessing to there is nothing bad in feeling bad but you know what there's something bad in allowing a bad feeling to lead you into bad actions hello you know why you feel bad when you feel hot is because you are human now the flesh part of your life will feel bad you feel hot it happens to us you feel that so this kind of person can leave me you feel like okay upon all i have done for this person this person can do this to me you think peter and john will not feel bad that day as they were going to lock them up that's why peter said uh -uh, for this good thing we have done is this what you want to do to us he felt bad but hear me you are a child of god say i'm a child of god let's look at the book of romans chapter 8 verse 1 i want to show you something romans chapter 8 verse 1 Romans chapter 8 and verse 1. Shagad Abbas It says, There is therefore now no condemnation to who? To those who are in Christ Jesus. Not general now. Who do not walk according to the flesh. Can you see? There is no condemnation for those of us who are in Christ who does not allow the flesh to control us. You know, at such times when you feel bad, the flesh will tell you, come on, it's time to show them that you are not a fool. Come on, it's time to keep malice. Come on, it's time to pay back evil for evil. That's what the flesh will tell you. The flesh wants to control you. 
But hear me. The scripture is saying, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to what? The spirit. The spirit there is biggest. The leading of the Holy Ghost. Who do not walk after the flesh. You are a child of God. You are now born again. You cannot allow your flesh to control you. Yes, there's nothing bad in feeling bad. But it is bad for you to stay bad. Praise the Lord. I wrote here, please do not allow your flesh. Drag you down. To their level. To make you regret doing the will of God. Or to make you want to pay play the ball of life according to their expectation you know the flesh will want to bring these two the number one the flesh will want to make you you know regret ah, in fact i regret being born again i regret that i'm a christian ah, you know the flesh will want to make you feel that way then the flesh will want you to say pay them the same coin in the same coin pay them in the same coin but you are a child of God. You are born again. You are different. You can't live like them. I love the way Paul the Apostle put it in Romans chapter 8 from verse 12. Let's look at deeper. Let's go deeper. Romans chapter 8 from verse 12 to verse 14. Oh, before we go to Romans 8, 12, 14. Let's look at uh, that's Romans 12, 19 to 21. Let's speak it one after the other. Romans 12, 19 Thank you. He said, Beloved, do not avenge yourself. Have you been betrayed? I'm talking to you now. Do not avenge yourself. Have they paid you back for the good you have done? Do not avenge yourself. Don't fight for yourself. Allow the God you serve to fight for you. He said, But rather, do what? Give place. For ye left, we be no alone. Give place to rot. For it is written, Vengeance is whose? Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Let God be the one fighting for you. Next verse, we stop at 21. He said, therefore, if your enemy is hungry, can you see that? Your flesh will not want you to do this one. Because your flesh is feeling hot. Huh? Upon the good thing I did for her. Upon the good thing I did. Is it because I'm born again? Is it because I, I decided to live my life according to God's will? That somebody is treating me like this. He said, listen, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him a drink. For in doing, you will heap a coal of, you eat coals of fire on his head. In doing so, now verse 21, you eat coal of fire on his head. Now which means don't act. You know what this summary of these verses say? Don't act according to the leading of the flesh. If anyone betrays you. Verse 21, Timothy my fellow worker okay and other things like that don't act according to the leading of the flesh just allow the spirit of god it's romans 12 that we are in here i don't know how we jump to romans 16. romans 12 19 to 21 what happened did he fly thank you he said do not be overcome by evil but do what but overcome evil with what with good to say I'm a child of God. I wrote here, let your spirituality subdue the voice of the flesh that is telling you to react. Let your spirit, let your consciousness of being spiritual subdue the voice of the flesh telling you to react. I wrote here again, the best way to undo betrayers and people who pay you evil for for for, for, for for good done is to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. And what will the Holy Spirit lead you to do? Number one is it will lead you to forgive them. Let your heart release them. Now, I'm not saying you can give them the same opportunity again. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is that let your heart, don't let your heart begin to curse them. Don't let your heart begin to feel, may, uh, uh, may, may, make you feel, I may prompt you to say, I'm going to go around and be telling people what they are. No, no, let your heart forgive. You know what, what, what you are doing by letting your heart forgive them? You are releasing the judgment of God to take its full course upon them. If you read through that scripture we read, you'll see that Peter and John, they didn't do anything negative. They didn't fight them. They only came up to say, 
for the good we have done is this the reason why you have locked us up you know there was one this particular day i had some set of people speaking against me and i've been so good to them so when i had it i told myself i will look for a time i'll go and see these people I will just walk into their mix and tell them, I had everything you have said. And you know what the Lord said to me? He said, son, if you can fight for yourself, then I don't need to fight for you. But do you know that it is my fight that brings the ultimate kind of victory? How does God fight? God at times does not fight by killing the enemy. At times, God's fight might be by uh, displaying his glory in your life in such a way that the same people that spoke against you will come to bow before you. But you won't allow it come to pass if you are fighting for yourself. That's why you see that both Apostle John and Peter never did anything to say, okay, okay, maybe we should allow this man to go back to his crippled state. No, they didn't say that. They didn't say, okay, you these people that are doing this against us, we have power to raise this man, the same power that have been displayed, we curse you people. It, they didn't cost anybody. They allowed God to have his beloved. Never allow their attack to make you discouraged. Some of their gossip is because, hear me, is because they know that you are doing exploits and going places. But because they are envious and afraid, they just pick battles against you. I'm telling you, some of these actions they put off some of them sincerely speaking is because they are afraid of what god is doing in your life but you don't know that god is doing anything because you yourself cannot view your own life can i tell you this truth you are not the first person to know that god is good to you it is those that are watching you that will first know that god is good how do i know it let's go back to that same acts of the apostles acts chapter 4 look at 14 to, to 22 now from verse 14 to verse 22 that same act we are studying acts chapter 4 today acts chapter 4 from verse 14 look at this and seeing the man who had been healed standing with them they could say nothing against it be one no real move on nothing against it 15 but when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council they conferred among themselves which means they had a meeting among themselves and what was the outcome of their meeting the next verse verse 16 saying what shall we do to this man for indeed that what a notable miracle has been done through them is evident some of those that hate you, they hate you not because you are evil, but because of what they see that God is doing. So they are afraid of where you are going. And because they are afraid, they now believe that, okay, if they pick a fight against you, maybe it will discourage you. You know what they saw? They saw that this man was healed. It was evidently, it was clear. So children of God, look up. Listen to me. No matter what kind of evil people do to you? Don't use evil to pay them. Did you hear me? You are a child of God. You are different. Okay, you have, you have been a blessing to several people and they betray you. Don't stop being a blessing. Don't say because of what some people have done, I will not be a blessing to anybody again. Ah, sir, you don't understand. What some people have done, I will not be a blessing to anybody again. Ah, sir, you don't understand, sir. If you know what people have done against me, do you know that after Peter and John were released. They went back to preach again. They didn't stop preaching. Listen, we used to say it in my tribe. There are possibilities that you help short people. And it is tall people that God will use to reward you. But Pastor, listen. Don't do that. Peter and John. No, let's, let's read further. Let's read further. Let's read further. You see what Peter said. Verse 16. Saying, okay, we have read this. Take verse 17. But so that it spreads no further among the people, let us severely threaten them that from now on they speak to no man 
in this name. 18. So they called them and commanded them not to speak at, at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. Verse 18. Verse 18. So they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. Okay, next verse. Verse 19. Not to teach. But Peter and John answered. Now that, would be your, that must be your attitude. And said to them, whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than to God, you judge. Say after me, I will do the will of God. I didn't hear you. Now, make up your mind that you will stand on God's lane. No matter what people do to you, make up your mind that it is the will of God you will do. That you won't hate them back for whatever they do. You know, if you hate them back, you no longer live according to the spirit. Don't forget, you are not to live according to the flesh. Let's, please, hold on with this one. Let's read Romans chapter 8, 12 to 14. This time from the NIV version. NIV version. I want to show you who you are. NIV, thank you. Therefore, brothers, we have an obligation. But it is not to the sinful nature to live according to it. Now, we have a command. And what's the command? It is not to live according to the sinful nature. Next verse. Not to live according to sinful nature. For if you live according to the sinful nature, what will happen? You will die. Which means you will commit atrocity. You will fall from the grace of God. But if by the Spirit, you will put to death the misdeeds of the body. The more you live by the Spirit, the more the, you you. You, you subdue the spirit. You will leave. Now, verse 14. I love verse 14. He said, because those who are led, which means those who live their life according to the spirit of God, they are the ones that are called who? Sons of God. So me, I'm a son of God. I will not hate my haters. Are you sure you are just confessing or you are real? Are you real? Make up your mind. I know somebody will be saying, Pastor, they have not hurt you. If I tell you my story, ah, who live here? I come again. If I tell you my story, there are times I will go home. In those days when I didn't know how to undo it, I will go home and I will sit down and I will be saying, me. She me, she me, she me, she buy a phone, a me, a me. But now I understand that I, I do not have an obligation to live according to the flesh. I'm a child of God. So Peter said to them in that Acts of the Apostles, that you judge it. She kafi, 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 e tu olon vwa ye wale, ka ma telete No, 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 you judge it within yourself. That was when they released them. Me have made up my mind though. I will live my life according to the leading of the Spirit. Now, second lesson I want us to pick from Acts chapter 4 is in verse 13. I told you I will show you three lessons. We take the communion, we pray and close. Verse 13. Let's read this one together. Thank you from the King James Version. Thank you. One, two, and let's go. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled and they realized that they had been with Jesus. What does this scripture mean to you? It means that, look up, they look at the life of this man. They saw two things. They said, number one, we, we have seen, look at their courage. Look at their boldness. Look at the kind of power they command. Now, what's the second thing they saw? They saw that ah, these men are not educated men. It is educated people that can be bold like this. Hello? So they were now thinking, what could be the secret of this strange lifestyle? And they themselves summarized and said, we discovered that this man had been with Jesus. Now what's our lesson? I learned in this verse that a complete devotion to Jesus will produce flag one a difference in us should I go on in us 
to the point that we will become greater than our natural qualification. Let me come again. I learned in this verse that a complete devotion to Jesus will produce a difference in us to the point that we will become greater than our natural qualification. Look at, they were illiterates according to men. But how can illiterates be this bold? That's what they were saying. How can illiterates command this kind of crowd? Can I tell you this truth? Look up. Okay, if you are finished writing. If you are devoted, I'm not saying you just come into church. You make up your mind that you will serve this God. Now that you are born again, you will serve God. You will maintain a devotion to him. See, the Holy Spirit will teach you certain things that will make your life better than your natural qualification. That when they ask you, how old are you? You mention your age. People say, ah, ah, you are just so and so years. How are you this wise? They ask you, uh, what, 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 uh, uh, what, what, what level of education did you have? You, have? you mentioned where well, I, have, I have only a first degree. Say, only first degree? And you have done this great thing? That was exactly what was happening. If you are born again and you are not great, I can tell you the truth. You are not devoted. If you devote more time, devote yourself to really serve God, he will teach you certain secrets that will make you great. I, will, I promise that, I wrote in my notes here, that I will share five encounters that changed my life. Nobody taught me. It was in my commitment, in my time with God, that he taught me these things. And these principles helped me. The Bible says they discovered that they've been with Jesus. I used to tell Oriola, that you are 11 years old. I gave my life to Christ when I was 15. My wife, your mom, gave her life to Christ when, when she was 11. She, she started reading Bible. Me, I started reading Bible at the age of 15. And I was reading, gaining message. I used to tell Eniola to that. This one's, uh, you people should grow. There are several things God will teach you that will be far beyond your age. That when you appear, people will say, ah, ah, how come? Where did you get this wisdom from? Then they will say, this man has been with Jesus. I wrote five of my encounters. Now, one of the encounters I had, many years ago, many years ago, the Lord taught me by himself. Now, and what was the first, and I wrote it here, my encounter when David and one of his officers met Saul. I was, that day, many years ago, I was still a young Christian, no? I saw where David said uh, Saul slept. All his men slept off. And David got there. And his servant, his bodyguard was telling him, Oga, Oga, this man has been chasing you all these years. This is an opportunity. Kill him. Then you become king. Abi, kill him and you become king. And David said, Ha, no one will lay his hand on God's anointed and go guiltless. I will never forget the voice of the Holy Spirit that came to me that day said, Son, Whenever a sergeant is given the privilege to notice the error of a general, it is not for the sergeant to announce it, but to learn from it so as not to be like the general in that area. Many years ago, that's why you will never see me speak against any father in the Lord in the land. Because anything you criticize, you will never attain. Because I know that me too, I'm going to become a father in the land one day. He has taught me this many years ago. So even when elders make mistakes, somebody said, but pastor, what about when elders make mistakes? Look at when they came to Jesus and said, Jesus, Jesus, uh, is it good for us to divorce our wives? Abi, is that not what he said? Jesus said, no. When he that cre God created you, created you male and female. He said, but Moses, <laughs> They wanted to set Jesus up. Permitted us to give us what? To give our wives certificate of divorce. You know what Jesus said? He didn't criticize Moses. Though. He said, Moses gave you permission to divorce your wife because what? Your heart was hard. And he ended the discussion like that. There are 
are several things you will learn from your relationship with Jesus that no man can teach you. I've learned that for many years now. So no matter what anybody that I call father do to me, I don't. Let me share this experience. Because of this revelation I had, I once had a father in the Lord. He's no longer in Nigeria now. He has relocated abroad. Now, that was the first man, the second man, that was my father in the Lord. I used to attend this church. He didn't train me. God just told me, go and, pick, go and submit to him. So I used to attend this church for programs. And I was still a pastor of the church I was pastoring here. So this particular day, he invited a guest speaker to come and preach. And the guest speaker, I attended to the guest speaker. He told me to attend to the guest speaker. I attended to the guest. So the guest speaker liked me so much. And the guest speaker said, sir, I pass up Prince Will. I would love to come and minister in your church. Give me your number. And uh, uh, sincerely, innocently, I gave him my number. Mommy, are you here with me? Are you catching what I'm preaching? I gave him my number. We organized, he called me, he was coming, he came he, to preach in our church. I did all these things innocently. After preaching, he said he wants to come and greet my father in the Lord. I said, no problem, sir. I even drove him to him. He said, ah, you are in, you are in Ibadan? He said, yes. I came to your son's place. I was with him for just ministered three days. I wanted to go back and I said, I should visit you. Utan. My father and the Lord said, wait for me. By the time he finished, the man of God was saying off. He said, enter the office. He said, you are a thief. I don't think God called you. I don't think God told you to come and submit to me. You are only looking for a ladder to climb. I can see. He was, all he was saying, my two hands was behind my back like this. My head was down. Because I learned from the encounter I had. You cannot lay your hands on God's anointed and go guiltless. My hands were, he was, there was nothing he didn't say. And he summarized by saying, Get out of my office. You thief. I wanted to take it out. So I left. The second day, I came to back to him. Knocked the office. Who is that? I said, it's me, sir. As I opened the door, I lay on the floor. Sir, I'm sorry. You know what he did? He said, Prince, we stand up. I'm very, very sorry for all I said to you yesterday. He said, as you left, the Holy Spirit said, you didn't even give him the chance to explain. He did all these things in the innocence of his heart. He now embraced me. Beloved, what if I didn't have an encounter not to be rude to fathers? You know, some of you, there's nobody you say, because anything in the pastor, let me share another one. I promise to share five. I wrote the five here. The second encounter, another one I had. I, this particular day, many years ago, I was studying Second Kings chapter four. That prophet whose widow died. It was from that scripture that I learned. I wrote it down. That money will be spent, whether you fast and pray or not. You will not succeed to stop spending money. So if you don't know how to make money, you will end either end up borrowing money or begging for it. Many years ago, in Mutiko. So, if you are devoted to Jesus, you will gain a lot. But if you are just coming, uh, I just come for service. You don't have a private time to study scriptures. You don't have private time to pray. You don't have private time to listen to the Holy Ghost. You can't learn anything. Third encounter I had. That was when we were. How many years ago? I learned this one from Adonijah. How many of you know Adonijah? the son of King Solomon that wanted to be king that bribed almost everybody 
but did not invite the, sir ma his name is Adonija that wanted to be king the son of King David yeah that bribed almost everybody but did not invite uh, the prophet it was from him I remember that day after reading the whole chapters and how he eventually fell and Solomon was chosen that was where I got that encounter from no matter how fast you run in the wrong direction your destination will still will, will, will remain an unattainable dream God taught me all these things I wrote the third one too here is it third or fourth this particular day I was praying for rent I'm telling you 24 years ago story I was praying, Uluwa, ah, we need to pay the church rent. Lord, rent, Lord, rent. And I had God toss here the Lord. The Lord said to me, Son, you don't pray for rent, you plan for rent. I will help you pay this one. But from now on, you plan your rent. And beloved, since then, I have not had to pray for any rent again. Over, over 15 years now, over 18 years. Then what about the one that fixed my marriage? I was studying Ephesians 5. And I just had Holy Spirit said to me, son, see marriage as a true life stage drama. Where you cannot afford to make a mistake. You have a script. Your, partners has, your partner has her own script. Master your script. Act your script leave the movie director to decide what to do and i said lord what is my script he said husband love your wife as christ loved the church and gave himself for her what's my script love your wife as christ loved the church if you can love your wife as christ loved the church leave the rest and as i started to play my script i started enjoying my home there are several things you learn. The Bible says, they look at them and say, these men are not educated. How did they do all this great thing? They now discover that because they've been with Jesus. Are you with Jesus? Some of you have not been enough with Jesus. Three days ago, I woke up from, um, you know, I woke up in the middle of the night and I said, Lord, I need you to help me. Concerning this, 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 I was just saying, Lord, this, 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 this. What do you, what will I do? How will I be able to do these things? And instantly he said to me, son, I had him clear. I will help you. Relationship with Jesus will make you better than your natural qualification. That's why, be more devoted. Young generation, be more devoted. Don't wait until your daddy says, Oh, yeah, it's time for us to pray. Don't wait until mommy says, It's time for us to study scriptures. Study it on your own. Pray. Then keep quiet for the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Sir, there are places I have entered in my life that when people ask me, How old are you, sir? If I tell them, tell them I, How come you have gotten to this point? Most people that meet me now, what they call me is Facebook pastor. Sir, we know you on Facebook. Sir, we know you on Facebook. Be devoted, please. Last week was a very tough week for us. I am, I, I am a wife because we had three major prayer points. Amara was in the hospital. Precious wife was in the hospital. Brother Tunji's wife also joined. And as anytime I call, hello, mommy, Amara. Hi, Samara. She doesn't have, know how to give good news. Anyway, no, like she wow. Yes, I'm going to be there. We're precious, she's mature. I mean, brother Francis, she's mature. I want more by my child. I mean, Papa, we are on it. We are on it. We are on it. Yamara, we are on it. You know, I tell my wife, let's pray. Now, bro, precious wife too, you know, but I just noticed that 
I took the it was precious for us. Precious came to tell me his news. Abraham and I have called me in the morning. I just came to the altar. I spent time. I was praying, Lord, these are my children. Please have your way. Please take control. The Lord said, Son, stand up. Go to the hospital and pray for precious wife. So I went there. I prayed for you. As you are going into the theater, I prayed those prayers. Son, go to UCH yourself. Don't send anyone. I stood. I went there. After some time of staying, Prof. Francis went to get drugs. I said, Mommy Amara, I want to pray for her. Can I? Ah, yes, sir. She stood up. I laid my hands upon her, prayed for her according to the leading of the Spirit, and I left. I was preparing message. Around 5 a.m., I was perfecting my message. 5 a.m. in the morning when uh, Sister Ayo's call came in. Papa, want to be with me? Ah, let it be one hour ago. Go to be more. He be I want to be with me. Let it work. I want people if ever message Jimmy Joe. But instantly, Mama, uh, because once my phone is she, she what happened? I told her we agree. As I was praying, she was saying Amen. And what was the prayer? Lord, today is Sunday. I'm going to church. It is good news I want. As I was coming down from the altar, the call came in. They've given back to the child, but the child is not breathing. Some of you saw me. Okay. One try like me. Ah. Give me the phone. In the name of Jesus. I command life to return to that body life to return to that body life everybody that was greeting me i was just greeting them by faith and i told my wife i said they said the child is not breathing but we have commanded life i've prayed in agreement and by faith i came up to summarize the praise that we used to have but i had the holy spirit says to me son it's good news so like few minutes after they called sir the child is breathing. Listen, devotion to Jesus. Hello, me okay. And and see a lot of She call. He will beautify your life. But listen, the condition is that you must be devoted. Don't serve him in an agat agaban gabious way. Go correct your man. Let's take the final one. I want to summarize chapter 4. Then verse 23. Have you learned something? Are you sure you have learned something? Verse 23. Acts 4.23. Let's take our last lesson. And being let go as they released them. Look at this. They went to their what? To their what? Companions. And reported all that the chief priests and elders had said. Now look up, look up. Don't remove this thing. I want to teach us something. I noticed this about, it's common with every member of our church. We don't have companions. We walk alone. But look at this. The Bible says, as they released them, they went to their, some versions will say, their company. Now, I want to encourage you, children of God, members of Gospel Evangelical Mission, please begin from now to gather your company. Now, which means men and women of like passion. Don't be carrying your Bible after service and disappear. Relate. I want you to begin from now, begin to raise prayer partners for yourself. It takes time. It takes prayerful watch. But please, stop trying to run the journey of life alone. But well, that was what I was looking at too when you were doing your naming yesterday. You were the one running around except for some few people. And I said I will try maybe in the workers meeting I will address it. You are beginning to be like me. Me too, I don't have company. 
My company is my wife and children. But let's begin to adapt. Listen, we need friends. Do you think me too? I like it. I don't like it. We need friends in the fold. You know one of the reasons why some of me and of us don't have friends is that we have standard and our standard is high. So when we relate with people based on our standard, we feel that we can't fit. But we don't know that even God himself tolerates us. Or oh, you don't know? Or oh, you didn't hear me? God himself tolerates us. The Bible says they went. If you look at the end result, there's no time I would have shown you. They prayed with their company. The Holy Ghost came down. And the Bible says great grace was upon them. I remember when we were young believers, my wife can testify to it in the church where my, our pastor raised us. You see that people are coming for choir rehearsal. as somebody has cooked. Maybe because it was a small fellowship share. But what I'm trying to say is that please, let's open up for relationship. Did you hear me? Let's open up. For relationship in the fold um, among ourselves. Did you learn something today? Let's summarize all we learned. Number one, we've been taught as Christians how to handle betrayal, how to handle the negative way people react to us, that we cannot react back. We cannot use uh, betrayal to respond to betrayal. We are different. That's why we are born again. That we should allow God to fight for us. Number two, we have taught us that relationship with Jesus, when we become more devoted, will make us to learn so many great things. Then we become greater than our natural qualifications. And number three, we have been taught that we cannot run the race of destiny alone. We need relationship. And I taught you that if you are going to relate, stop judging people based on your own standard. Thank you. Everybody cannot be you. Everybody cannot be you. The Lord will give you deeper understanding. Deeper encounter and revelations in Jesus' name. Let's bow down our heads and let's pray for ourselves. Prayer points we are going to pray, Lord, make me, help me that I will know you better than this. Begin to pray for yourself. Reveal more of yourself to me, O oh God, in Jesus' name. More of yourself. More of yourself to me, O oh God. Reveal more of yourself to me, O oh God. Help me that I will know you deeper than this. Because I've seen now that a devotion to Jesus will make our lives better than our natural qualifications. Thank you, Father. Take all the glory. In Jesus' name we have prayed. We want to take the, the blood and the flesh right now. Please, can you open it? Uh, Minister Gabriel. 